Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with a long overdue video looking at Fluid Ninja. Now if you've never heard of Fluid Ninja before, it is an add-on for Unreal Engine. It is currently part of the featured free marketplace content, and I did promise to cover this one, and I'm running out of time, because basically you have until next Tuesday to pick this one up, but you can get it completely free. So we did a partnership with the Unreal Engine marketplace. Uh, our community helped to pick some of the assets in this bundle. One of the most popular requested was the Fluid Ninja VFX tool, and that is what we are going to be looking at today. Day. So this is the Fluid Ninja VFX tool. It is used for creating um, baked particle systems. They can be used with Niagara or volumetric systems, uh, but basically it renders down to a series of very high performance uh, flipbooks, more or less, with some extra information baked in there. But you can do some really cool fluid simulation dynamic stuff with this software. And that is what we are going to quickly look at today. Now, first off, it's probably easiest to showcase what it is capable of. And this is their demonstration level. And it's going to show you a number of the different options available. Uh, so here you've got a pyrotechnic example, and then you can do uh, kind of swaps out with them at real time. So even though this is pre-baked, you can also make changes to it. So you can change out uh, particle system colors and so on in the simulation. But you get an idea of the kind of stuff that you can use this for. Use it to create auroras, use it to create rushing smoke or long smoke or a waterfall effect and so on. This example, uh, this is is their, um, oh, I forget the word terminology they use for it, but they have a ton of uh, use cases, I believe. Uh, they have a ton of different examples in there. Uh, you can also uh, drive things via particles and with uh, fields. Uh, we will see a little bit of that in action as we go, but you can see some of the various different things that can be created using the fluid simulations of um, Fluid Ninja. There's also, again, vector fields. We're going to not really get into that in this particular video, but you also see how you can uh, modify and change the end results. So again, even though the results are baked and lightweight, they're still somewhat dynamic with what you can do with them. So you can see here, there are a plethora of different things you can do using Fluid Ninja. Now, the immediate thing is, I know a lot of people didn't find it that obvious how things work. So that's what we're going to do. We'll hop out of immersive mode and we'll show you how to use these tools. So first off, what you're going to want to do is open up the Ninja Tools level if you have not done so already. Which, by the way, the way you go about creating this guy in the Epic Games Launcher, go to your library like so. Uh, go to your vault once you have purchased it, so you do have to buy it. And you will notice the option is to actually create a project. So you're using uh, basically Unreal Engine as the host for this creation tool. And the cool thing about it is you can actually use the end results in whatever you wish. So you can render these out to a series of PNG files and you could use them in um, Unity or the Godot game engine if you wish, but obviously they work best in um, Unreal because there are special containers and such for working with uh, the end results. But once you've got this level loaded up, uh, again, find it content drawer, ninja tools, just run it. And here you can see the tools in action. Now, this is the one we're going to look at the most in this particular case, but there's other options here. There's intro, which is sort of like a... Um, uh, a manual of sorts. You can jump through page by page and see how uh, the basics of um, nin uh, Fluid Ninja work. I'm not going to go through all of the details of what you can do with this guy, but what I want to showcase uh, while we're here, so let me escape out of this guy for a second, uh, what you're going to really want to check out is this user manual right here. So trying to figure out uh, how to work with uh, Ninja Fluids or um, Ninja Tools, sorry, you're going to want to go to this manual here. This is the, the definitive source of how to do things. Although a few things seem to have changed in the painting area, this will walk you through pretty much everything you need to know. So this PDF is definitely your next step if you're going to check this guy out. So now let's take a quick high level look at Fluid Ninja itself. We're actually going to focus only on Fluid Ninja, but I'm going to show you the other aspects of this program. So once again, you run it here uh, in this levels here, levels, Ninja Tools, open that one up and then go ahead and play it. And you go to full screen, you can hit F11, get more of a standard application like interface going on. Now what you're going to notice here is it's broken down into kind of five different categories over here. The intro is straightforward. It's a five category or six pages of documentation, kind of walks you through the basics. I still recommend checking out that PDF to learn a little bit more. Uh, again, Fluid Ninja is the heart of things, and that's what we're going to focus on in this video. You also have Ninja Config, and this one's pretty important because you're actually using this as a tool to create these um, 
these special effects, and you're going to often want to save them out, especially if you're using them outside of Unreal Engine. Now, they'll save temporarily in the Outputs folder, but if you want to save them externally, you will set an external path. Also, if you want to set some configurations up, such as gamma correction, how, how things should be encoded, and so on, those can all be done using the Ninja Config settings. We've also got uh, Ninja Fields. This is for creating vector fields beyond the scope of what we we're going to talk about here, but just know this is more of the functionality of what Fluid Ninja has. And also, we have have Ninja Flow, which basically is for creating these flow maps uh, from an image. Uh, those can be used in Fluid Ninja itself. Again, documentation covers all of those things. I just want to show you the basics of how this tool works and how you would set things up yourself. Now, basically, you're working with two inputs, your velocity map input, which is normally just a static image. In this case, it's a very simple image. And then here uh, we have the density, uh, the input density, that, that is kind of the, the grunt of your fluid simulation. And generally that is being provided by a particle system. I will show you how that works exactly in just a minute. But you'll see here, you've got a number of different examples. Here is a simple flower example. This is your output um, density and your output velocity. These two to go together to create this special flip book, which has extra information encoded in it that allows you to do kind of cool runtime things. So you notice here uh, with the density, we go down here for the density settings of it, and I can do things like I can change the hue, which by the way, these can be done at runtime. And you see, you get some pretty immediate results. You can also change, again, change the contrast. So you can get some pretty profound changes just by tweaking a few of these settings as well. Uh, you can change the, the basically the strength of it. Uh, the sharpening or the opposite over here. So you got control over that. Same thing for your velocity over here. Uh, you can change the amount. So here you can see the velocity is kind of smearing it to one side. That's the ultimate end result of this particular input map with the um, the offset set. So we can go the other way. You see the results on the map over here. And you can see how those maps all kind of interact with the density maps, etc. So even using these pre-confined settings, there's quite a bit you could do. But I'll also show you how to set up your own version of what's over here. Now we also got, again, here's an example of the uh, Aurora Borealis. I don't know why this one always breaks and shows it like in this small size there. No idea what's going on there. Here you can see the same thing used to create um, dry ice. Uh, we got other ones here. Here's one just for uh, calibration. And by the way, you can actually paint on these on these maps. And so over here, the input map, and you'll see the result of it kind of showing up over there. So if you want to do some real-time tweaking to the results, you can actually do that as well. You get here again, a number of explosions. So this one's cut off as well. I'm not sure. It's got to be something to do with the, the render output. It's very strange though that... Uh, so again, here's some freehand uh, version, so you can actually do um, drawing on the uh, the input density. You see, you're actually creating it on the fly, and the results of it are showing up over there. So if you wanna you wanna kind of tweak things on the fly, you can actually paint things yourself. And here's another example, just a straightforward fireball. And we'll start with the fireball. The only thing I'm going to change on this guy from the default is uh, let's change the hue. All right, there we go. Looks a little bit more fireball-y to me. Now, if you want to go ahead and actually use this, what do you do? Well, that is where baking comes in. So what you all, all you really need to do is come on over here and bake it. So here you can say 32 frames of it. Uh, you can say, okay, every X frame, uh, loop every X number of frames over there. You set your resolution over here. And by the way, you also have control over your uh, viewports using these two buttons right there. Um, so once you've got it set to the way you want to go, you're going to do is go ahead and bake this one out. So I could just click here, bake the result, and then you're going to see we're basically rendering those 32 frames of it in the sequence. And give it a second when it's almost done. And then what over there, you can see the end result of our work right here. Now what you'll notice over here is you've got some... Uh, cool options here as well. The end result of what you just did isn't necessarily saved anywhere. This is where that save directory kind of becomes important. So what we can do is we can uh, bake data for save um, and we can create a material for it. I'll show you both those in action. Also, if you're using this, like say in Godot or Unreal Engine, or sorry, Unity Engine, you could also export out as a ping sequence if you wish. And basically your end result is this guy over here. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll create a texture. So you see here, uh, assets marked for save. And then we'll go ahead and we'll create a material for it. And sure, we'll call that advanced player, whatever that was. So now we're basically done with the uh, the simple part of Fluid Ninja. By the way, if you're struggling with any of this, there is a tooltip option that will kind of give you an overview of what, and some of these are pretty in-depth tooltips. So kind of if you're struggling what things do, that guy is available for you right there. So now I'm going to go ahead, we'll hit F11 again, go out of this guy, we'll stop playing, and I'm going to show you where some of these things actually reside. Now the first thing you're going to want to be aware of is the output. So go to the output folder, and here is the end result. So again, we created this, this text 
texture atlas with all of the various different frames that is the one output from this um, you'll notice it also created a secondary atlas of type velocity and these two things are used together uh, to actually create so there you can see it's the end result here this is using those density maps and again you can actually change these things on the fly so if i want to change uh one of these colors or the secondary color right here uh oh i guess i didn't want to turn that one off how do i turn second color third color uh color one click that change that there you see an immediate result of switching those things out so go ahead and now i'm going to just go to space bar we'll flip frame by frame through this guy let's back up a bit so there you can see the end result of the fluid sim and this guy can then be incorporated as you go back to the various different examples that are available you can have this drive uh a niagara particle system there is a ton of ways you can integrate this into your world so there's actually some neat things here that show how you can have like uh, co actual collisions you can have a, a physical object that's interacting with the fluid simulation that you created and so on now the other key thing here is you're going to want to check out input now when we went ahead and we ran everything let me just show you exactly how this works so again we have flower here and then flower has a series of inputs so we could go here uh there's a different particle system that was feeding into this guy for example that's thus the file name ps underscore flower color or we can do a mono particle system you can see the results of those being fed in you also could potentially have it for the um the velocity input as well or we could actually go ahead and draw that by hand if we so wish which again is another feature and you can see how it's having an immediate impact over here but what you'll notice here is we're looking at flower right now flower has this input of these different particle systems available to you so if you want to set up your own simulation i'll exit out of this guy uh so escape all right so come back here you're going to notice inputs again we were there we were inside of fluid ninja so you go to fluid presets and then we were in flower so you go to flower what you're gonna notice is particle systems so the two different particle systems there is the color particle system right there and the other one is the mono colored one here and we've also got these data tables which sets a number of the uh, the values you got to match the the naming exactly for it to take place by the way but here's where you can set a number of configured or default values uh to be passed in um, and that is basically how you define your own extension. So if you wish, again, you can come back here to, um, in the inputs, basically just create a new folder inside of the fluid presets for the case of if you're creating something for fluid ninja, create a new folder. So here, and you see for creating a fireball, you've got these source particle systems that come in. Those provide the volume maps on the way in. And then when you want to go ahead and check out how this guy can be used for stuff, you're going to notice again. So there's a ton of integrations here. It's got Niagara integrations and so on. So here you can see one of the examples of integrating it with Niagara itself. There is documentation walks you through this process, but in the end, Fluid Ninja ultimately does just spits out these two, the velocity and the density maps. And those are used by the rest of the system. So you can see here a couple of different examples being used. I'll select this guy right here. This is uh, a, a Niagara system. So we'll go ahead and we'll check that guy out and see how it actually integrates. So let's open that guy up. And you go on down here, you're going to notice the, the two different, so the purple haze and the silver drift. If we scroll on down through the settings of this Niagara particle system here, you're going to notice we have particles are being fed by the Ninja Flipbook players. So this is one of the ways you can use it. So you see here, uh, we've got a variety of different settings being sent in from these flipbooks, which can be configured as part of your, your uh, particle systems, which can have a dynamic effect, as you're going to see over here with them interacting with the planets and so on. So you can integrate it with Niagara systems, so you can get a semi-dynamic nature out of the fluid simulation you work with. Um, you can also just stray forward the results that we created earlier on. So let's go here to our output folder right here. Uh, so let's find it. All right, so... Where's my output? Oh, I swore I had some output. Okay, I must have I must have erased it in a runtime. This again is why you want to go ahead and export out your results. So let's let's just fire this one up from the beginning. So let's go here quickly. Level Ninja Tools. We'll run it like so. So okay, we'll go ahead. We'll create this guy right here. I'm not gonna make any changes to it. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll render that. So you see the end result of our rendering over here. We like what we've done. Okay, cool. Let's create a texture out of it. A material out of it we'll spit that material out like so uh we will stop go back over to our uh, different scene so we can show you this guy in action so uh that was the 
really doesn't matter. But I'll go back to my cloud vortex scene right there. And we'll go over here. Our output is available right there. If in my scene, for example, I just had an object like so, so a basic shape like a cube somewhere in my scene like this, I could have also just as easily used this guy. If I don't need to do anything special or uh, complicated or anything, you literally just drop it in as a material on an object in the scene. You can use it that simply. And you're going to notice with it out there, you can actually um, change the settings of this guy. So I could go here and let's open that guy up. So we could change this guy right here. Uh, so we'll do it here. We'll turn the color on. We'll change that guy right there out to like this pink, like so. Uh, we'll save that and we will exit out and then boom immediate results right there So you don't have to go through with this, this super tight integration or anything You can literally just take the material it spit out and use it as your fluid sim in the world So a good example of this for example was if you had a uh flickering candle in your scene and you wanted to render hundreds of them well you could do it this way and if you wanted to change the color slightly on them those are all configurable you can actually set those values at runtime and what we saw right here is one such example so it's a very powerful system built off of this kind of simple concept of these two flip books and they can be integrated into a number of different things there's a flip book player which you're actually kind of seeing in action right here uh, that comes with it um it, it's it's a neat process for sure uh, again, I highly recommend if you want to learn more about it, you're going to want to start with this documentation available right here. But finally, closing note, this is ending the first Tuesday of August. So if you want to grab Fluid Ninja and along with Fluid Ninja, we also have the Insta Deform component, which I showed you in action earlier on, point and click adventure, the turn based RPG template, and also the uh, Wild West city environment and the vehicle pack. Those are all available. Well, this one's permanently available, but there are other five ones. As long as you air quote buy them before the first Tuesday of next month, they are yours forever. But what we looked at today, uh, that was Fluid Ninja. Again, I only scraped the basic surface of what it's all about, but what you can do is create baked lightweight fluid sims to flip books um, and use again the player material or you'd have it drive Niagara or volumetric system so you could also use this to drive volumetric clouds the key thing is it's all very lightweight pre-baked so it's not um, going to be a performance pig but you'd still have configuration over a fair decent amount of these values at runtime so it's a neat tool definitely one that you should play around with so ladies and gentlemen that was fluid ninja let me know what you think comments down below I'll talk to you all later Goodbye.